You're listening to Policy Currents, a weekly podcast from the RAND Corporation. I'm Deanna Lee. And I'm Evan Banks. Every Friday, we bring you new insights from RAND's latest research and commentary. It's June 25th. We're opening the show today with an exciting announcement. Yesterday, we launched RAND Art Plus Data, our new artist residency program. Over the next year, RAND will partner with four groundbreaking artists to produce visualizations inspired by our research. The artwork created will aim to challenge conventional thinking about policy issues. The program's inaugural artist is information designer Georgia Lupi who will create three pieces for RAND Art Plus Data. Her first visualizes striking data points that appear in a recent RAND study on transforming America's mental health system. To check out the visualization and to learn more about the artist's residency, visit rand.org slash art plus data. Millions of Americans have to hire long-term caregivers for loved ones who cannot care for themselves. A new RAND study focuses on gray market caregivers, paid workers who are not related to the care recipient, not employed by a regulated agency, and potentially unscreened and untrained. The study finds that these gray market caregivers are widely used. In fact, nearly one-third of Americans who arranged for paid caregiving for an older person or for someone with dementia hired gray market caregivers. This was much more prevalent in rural areas. This study is the first national survey to probe the use of gray market care for older adults and people with dementia. That means there's not a lot of information available about some important factors, including the quality of gray market care and why people use it. But what we do know is that the need for long-term caregiving isn't going away. Demographic and social trends are reducing the number of family caregivers available to help older adults. And as a result, the need for home health aides and personal care aides is expected to grow by 36% from 2019 to 2029. Better understanding of the use of gray market caregivers for older Americans could help better meet the needs of the nation's aging population. A new RAND study finds considerable variation in sexual assault risk and sexual harassment risk among groups of soldiers in the U.S. Army. For example, Women at Fort Hood and Fort Bliss face the highest sexual assault risk in the Army, and the risk to those at Fort Hood is nearly a third higher than the average risk faced by all women in the Army. In fact, just a handful of bases account for 34% of the active-duty Army women who were sexually assaulted in 2018. The researchers also found that sexual harassment is more common than sexual assault in the Army, But unsurprisingly, there was a strong correlation between the two. That is, installations with a higher risk for sexual harassment also demonstrate a higher risk for sexual assault, and vice versa. Learning more about these risk factors is critical, because it can help the Army better tailor its efforts to prevent sexual violence. Despite long-standing disputes, the U.S.-China relationship was once viewed as stable and mutually profitable. But in recent years, this relationship has rapidly unraveled, unsettling global politics. And while it does appear that both Washington and Beijing are committed to peacefully resolving their differences, intensifying acrimony and distrust have raised fears that the two countries could be headed toward confrontation. A new paper by Rand's Timothy Heath offers a research primer on this important bilateral relationship. Heath breaks down five years of Rand research, more than 60 reports, on U.S. strategic competition with China. Areas of focus include China's military modernization, intensifying competition between the two powers on the information, cyber, and space fronts, and the importance of cooperation. And to that end, Heath draws this conclusion. Although competition between China and the U.S. will likely tighten in the coming years, strong incentives will remain for the world's two most powerful nations to cooperate on shared concerns. Recent cyber attacks have shown just how vulnerable our supply chains are. The ransomware attack against JBSSA, the world's largest meat producer, disrupted beef production in the U.S., Canada, and Australia. 
Last month's hack of Colonial Pipeline, one of the nation's largest fuel pipelines, stalled gas supplies in the eastern part of the country and drove up prices. And in 2020, there was the breach of solar winds, which provides software to numerous government agencies and nearly all Fortune 500 firms. In this breach, hackers were able to gain access to sensitive systems for months without detection. According to RAND's Jonathan Welburn, this intersection of cyber attacks and supply chains presents, quote, a wicked new form of risk. See, hackers prey on targets with a large attack surface, as cybersecurity experts call it. The more open ports to exploit, open machines to corrupt, or even open humans who can be targets of phishing emails, the larger the attack surface is. Because supply chains link together hundreds, if not thousands of firms, they may present the perfect target. Welburn notes that a recent executive order signed by President Biden may be a crucial first step in addressing the problem. And while we shouldn't expect an end to cyber-driven supply chain disruptions anytime soon, there are measures that can be taken to mitigate the risk. Protecting supply chains will require digital era solutions, including updating tools, regulations, and reporting requirements. RAND is a nonprofit institution that helps improve policy and decision making through research and analysis. For more on what we covered this week, check the show notes at rand.org slash podcast. We'll be off for the next two weeks for a short summer break, and then we'll be back in your feed on July 16th. See you then.